Hey guys, so I've been using this little set of Cotman watercolors for a while now. So I thought I would do a review of this small yet really versatile set by Winsor and Newton. In this video, I'll also be showing you how I paint a little Japanese storefront and how I mix colors with the set. So do stick around for that. So this little set is called a Skechers pocket box and it comes with 12 watercolor half pans and a little travel brush. So you can see the colors on the back of the box right here. And uh, this set is also made out of plastic, but it really feels quite sturdy. In fact, I've uh, kind of dropped it on the floor a few times, and, but thankfully it hasn't cracked or anything yet. So that's great. And this set, it actually fits on the palm of my hand. So you can literally slide it into your pocket before going out or even into your handbag so it's really convenient and I personally have been carrying it around everywhere in case I want to sketch something so I've been using this set alongside my bigger set for about 10 months so it's a little bit messy and there's also some gobs of paint uh, there's a little bit of a gob of burnt sienna because the pan is really full so sometimes it sticks to the cover when it closes a little bit of a nuisance yeah so the colors i have are lemon yellow cadmium yellow cadmium red pale alizarin crimson ultramarine cerulean blue viridian sap green yellow ochre burnt sienna burnt umber and chinese white which i basically haven't used much at all and they also have this little travel brush, which I mentioned before. Okay, yeah, so one of the drawbacks to this set is that the pans are kind of loose. So unless you have dried paint sticking to the sides of the pan, uh, then they will fall out quite easily. For the travel brush, I think it's really cute. I don't use it very often, but actually it's really handy as a detailing brush. Uh, I think it's about a size 2. Now I should have closed this brush when the, brush, when the bristles were wet, so it would be easier to close it. Yeah, so yeah, when, once it's closed, it's uh, really cute and small in size. Uh, and actually there's a little hole right here so after it's closed the bristles can dry and so that's really cool right so I'm going to swatch these colors so you can see what they look like on paper this is a 100% uh, cotton cold press paper sketchbook with some texture and I'm also using quite a lot of water and paint with my size 4 Winsor & Newton cotton brush. This is the lemon yellow and you can see that the paint is really vibrant and it's really quite easy to create gradients. I think that the colors look really great together and this combination of colors is really quite enough for me for painting anything from small sketches to bigger paintings. I've seen other people with this same set but they have phthalo blue instead of cerulean blue and I'm not sure if it's because they are different versions but personally I prefer cerulean blue because I paint the sky quite often so I'm glad I have this lighter blue in the set. Cotman is supposed to be student grade, but I think it's great quality, easy to mix, more affordable compared to professional grade paints, so it's perfect for sketching. Now I'm going to show you how I mix some of these colors together to create new colors. So the first one, uh, one of my favorite mixes is Ultramarine plus Burnt Sienna. So mixing these two colors together creates this grayish purple tone which is very useful for shadows. Because I don't use black, 
uh, so this is kind of the replacement for black or gray. And if I mix in more burnt sienna, it becomes this rich brown color that I really like for painting things like chocolate or chocolate cake. Yeah, so it's a really delicious looking kind of color. Next is ultramarine and yellow ochre. So since blue mixed with yellow becomes green, we get a grayish green color when we mix these two colors together. And if I add in more yellow ochre, the color becomes more like a warm autumn green color, which is lighter. Now, one color we don't have in this palette is pink or peach. So I usually use John Brilliant with red, but since I don't have that, I'll try using white and alizarin crimson instead. So I didn't like the bright pink, so I mixed in some burnt sienna, burnt umber, and also cadmium yellow. And now I get this little peach color. I accidentally smudged the paint when it was still wet, so I tried covering it up with the white paint and that didn't work. So I usually use white gouache from Holbein for highlights and mistakes and this 20ml tube lasts me for a very long time. So this is how the paints look like after they have dried. Less intense but still very vibrant. Okay, now I'll be painting this mini Japanese storefront with this pocket set. I'll show you what colors I mix and how I approach painting over my sketches. This one I did with this waterproof Sakura Micron pen. I'm using a size 4 Winsor & Newton Cotman brush first because I want to paint the roof, which is quite a large area. I'm using burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre to make it slightly lighter than pure burnt sienna. I'm making the left side darker than the right side on purpose to simulate the presence of sunlight coming from the right side. So painting this took quite some time, so I'll be speeding up the video a little bit because uh, I don't want you to get bored. And But I will show you the important parts and give you some tips on mixing the colors that I use. The next color I'll be using is a sort of turquoise blue. So since I don't have that color, I mixed cerulean blue with viridian, sap green, and a little bit of white. For sketches, I rarely test the colors on a different piece of paper first. So if the first stroke looks a bit odd, then I add other paints to the mix to adjust the tone and just continue painting after that. It's always better to color in the lighter parts of the painting first. So since the brick wall will be darker in color than the greens, I'll be painting the greens first. I usually start with a mixture of sap green and yellow and I paint the tops and the right side of the plants which are in sunlight. And then before the light green dries, I will add in a darker shade of green by adding ultramarine to sap green. It's better to do a few plants at a time because we're doing wet on wet. 
so we don't want the light green paint to dry before we add the darker green so this way the two paints mix together to create a beautiful gradient I repeat this until all the greens are painted Okay, next up is the brick wall and burnt sienna, my favorite color, is basically the color of brick. So I either use it pure or I add in a little bit of burnt umber to give the wall some variation in color. Burnt sienna on paper is so rich and warm, isn't it? Now I'm going to use a mix that I've showed you before, which is Ultramarine plus Burnt Sienna. I'm painting some of the areas that need grey, and also which are in shadow. I add in a bit of Cerulean Blue to the mix, when I paint some of the shadows and also when I paint the windows. Okay, on to the next exciting color. I needed a dark blue darker than ultramarine so since I don't have that in set I mixed ultramarine with viridian sap green burnt umber and a little bit of cerulean blue yes five colors but I really love this color this dark blue really complements the orangey burnt sienna and gives this storefront a little bit more pop and uh, it looks also more pleasing to the eye. I know mixing five colors sounds like a lot of colors and it might get muddy but these watercolors are of great quality so as long as you're being careful it doesn't really get muddy that easily. Now you may notice that everything is colored in, but now it looks kind of flat. Well, this is the time to add the shadows. I use the same ultramarine plus burnt sienna for my shadows, but in different concentrations. I never use black for shadows, so this is basically what I use to replace black or grey in most of my paintings. Once the shadows are in, I add in some little details like some bricks and darker bits and basically that's done! Hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give a thumbs up and remember to subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.